and students, it's a brand new day and a great chance to learn and enjoy watching through our virtual classroom brought to you by Valenzuela Life. I am Mamel. Today, I will be your teacher in Electricity 7. So with open ears and focused mind, equip yourselves with a pen and your learning module as you will know more about our lesson for today. Are you ready? Do you still remember the discussion last week? That I will find out as we have a recall of our previous lesson through this warm-up activity. Arranging jumbled letters. Arranging a set of jumbled letters to form the type of circuit its picture represents. For our first picture, let us have this. You've got five seconds to type in your answer in our chat box below. Timer starts now. Time is up. The answer is series circuit. Did you get that right? Well, that is good. Time's up for that, learners. How about this picture? What type of circuit is it? Type in your answer and your time starts now. Time is up. If your answer is parallel circuit, then you are correct. Doing even better grade 7 students? Lastly, we have this picture. What type of circuit is this? Type in your answer. The time starts now. The correct answer is combination circuit. Amazing thinking, grade 7. Great job. Finger hard to those who got it correct. Our discussion today is guided by the learning competency, maintaining tools and equipment where you are expected to. Number one, identify the functional and non-functional electrical tools and equipment. Number two, Follow the importance of knowing the method of identifying functional and non-functional electrical tools and equipment. And number three, check and maintain the condition of electrical tools and equipment. After learning about technical drawings and plans, today we will learn about ways of maintaining conditions of tools and equipment. Let us have what I call tools everywhere. Here are pictures of some tools. Can you tell which one can function well? The wrench. Can this wrench perform its function well? Very good. No, because its parts is broken. How about this hammer? Based on the picture, can this tool perform its function? Correct. This is also cannot perform its function well. Why? Because the hammer head is detached from its handle. How about this claw hammer? Do you think it can be used well when needed? Correct. This claw hammer can function well when needed. Next, we have the ring and open end combination spanner. Do you think this tool can perform its function? You got it right, dear learners, because the tool is in good conditions. It's free from any damage. How about these pliers? Can these pliers be used efficiently when needed? Very good. These pliers cannot be used efficiently because its part is broken. Another great job, dear grade 7 learners. And last, but definitely not the least, hand sew. Is it functional? Yes, it is. All the tools that we have presented are just 
such tools are recommended to be checked if functional or not before using to avoid accidents. Based on their conditions, tools may be described as either functional or non-functional tools. Functional tools and equipment are in good condition and can be performed the regular functions well. Here are some examples of functional tools and equipment. Standard screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, combination pliers, long nose pliers, wire stripper, and portable drill. Non-functional tools are tools that are not able to perform its regular function because of impaired and damaged parts like broken hammer with a handle, screwdriver with a broken handle, long nose pliers with damaged toes, cut and broken edge of foot rule, and electrical equipment with damaged cords. Since it is important to know the functional conditions of electrical tools and equipment, we should know the different ways of identifying them. Here are the methods of identifying functional and non-functional tools and equipment. Number one, through visual inspections, which can be done by direct observation by looking at the appearance of the tools, such as its dullness, sharpness, dismantled parts, and more. Next is the functionality. Vibration of extra noise from the operation means problems on parts and accessories starting to develop. Another is performance. When something is wrong with the performance, they need an immediate repair or maintenance. It is not only done during actual use, it should also be done after to determine whether the tools is still worthy to be used. Power supply is particular to electrically operated tools and equipment. Failure to meet the required power supply malfunction will occur on the part of hand tools and equipment. Next is the person involved. This refers to the technical person who has the knowledge and skills about technology. We commonly know them as electrician. Now, how do we determine functionality or conditions of our electrical tools and equipment to keep them good and efficient working for us. Here are some ways. Number one, clean out the dust. While tools are kept and not used in the storage, spend time to clean your tools out the dust every once in a while. Number two, check out the cord See if it is not broken with cuts or exposed. Number three, use the right tool correctly. Each tool is precisely designed for a specific purpose. So choosing the correct tool will also decrease the amount of effort required to get the job done right without posing to either equipment or to the surface being worked on. Next is to protect your tools from being damaged by proper handling and usage. Keep them away from heat, oil, sharp objects. These hazards can damage insulations. And number five, use of double insulated tools guarantees safety measures avoiding mishaps. And lastly, keep your electric tools stored in their original cases and containers. This will keep them free from dust and dirt while they are not being used. Now, grade 7 learners, let us see how will you learn about our lesson for today. And for your assessment, let us have fact or block. Read its given statement carefully and in 5 seconds, answer if it is a fact or just a block. Come on, let's start it on. Number one, to keep your electrical tools, keep it away from heat, oil, and sharp objects. Is it a fact or a block? Answer in our chat box, learners. And the answer
answer is fact. Great job, guys. Number two. Clean your tools out of the dust twice a month. Is it a fact or a bluff? Clean your answers now. You have five seconds to answer. And the answer, it is a bluff. You are correct. Next, keep your electrical tools stored in their original cases and containers. Is it a fact or a bluff? Your time starts now. Time's up. The answer is a fact. Okay. Number four. Choosing the correct tool will increase the amount of effort required to get a job done right. Is it a fact or a bluff? Key in your answer again in the chat box. Your timer starts now. The answer, it is a bluff. And for number five, inspect the power cords on your electrical tools if there is a tear or cut insulator. Is it a fact or a bluff? Timer starts now. And the answer, it is a fact. Did you get all the questions correct? Amazing job, grade 7 learners. With today's lesson, always remember, determining functional and non-functional tools will help us to do work efficiently. It may also avoid accidents and do our work faster. Now, your teacher and I would like to see how will you can perform the different ways of what we have discussed early in our lesson today. For your assignment, please create a video of yourself showing a different ways on how to maintain condition of electrical tools and equipment available in your home. The more ways or methods you show and include in your video, the better grade you can get. Please refer to the rubrics. Criteria demonstrated all six ways in maintaining the condition of tools, 10 points. Demonstrated four to five ways in maintaining the conditions of electrical tools, 8 points. Demonstrated two to three ways in maintaining the condition of electrical tools, 6 points. Demonstrated only one way in maintaining the condition of electrical tools, 4 points. No video presentation, 1 point. Thank you very much for your active participation in today's discussion. I hope you enjoy and learn a lot from our topic. For further questions and clarification, your TLE teacher will happily answer them in your follow-up discussion. Tandaan, ipasa ang nararapat at laging maging tapat. Once again, this is Ma'am Mel signing off. Bye everyone and see you again next Valenzuela.